Deion Sanders is back in the news after making some controversial comments when he revealed one of his recruitment strategies. While on the Rich Eisen show, Sanders said that when it comes to quarterbacks, he looks for someone that comes from a two-parent household and a high GPA because he has to be smart, not bad decisions off the field because he has to be a leader of men. However, when it came to defensive linemen, Sanders looks for a single mama trying to get it. He's on free lunch. I'm talking about just trying to make it. He's trying to rescue mama. The comparison between the two positions and what he looks for are what left everyone in an uproar and many disappointed with what he had to say, including D.L. Hughley, who would react with, Damn! Today we have our company hype analyst, Danielle Miller, Capone, and Pierre calling in to give their thoughts and reactions. But first, let's take a look at this clip. Looking at now, now quarterbacks are different. Yeah. We want mother, father, you know, dual parent. Mm -hmm. We want that kid to be three, five and up because he's got to be smart. Not bad decisions off the field uh, at all mm -hmm. because he has to be a leader of men. It's so many different attributes. That's what really we look for in quarterbacks. Different positions are different. Like, like, like old lineman, I look for dual parent homes, right. a strong father, smart kid, three, at least three, three and above. You're also describing Hurts. Yeah, it's tough, well. I mean, uh, physical, I mean, offensive lineman, defensive lineman is totally opposite. You mean? Single mama, <laughs> 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 wow. trying to get it, uh, he's on free lunch, uh, uh, I mean, I'm talking about just trying to make it, he's trying to rescue mama, <laughs> like mama barely made the flight. Trying to get out the mud. I, 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 now, in addition to DL's response, of course, you know, people were sounding off on social media. Thank you, Pierre, for, for filling in for me to execute that. Um, but I, I want to read one of the tweets, and Pierre, I'm going to actually st come back and start with you. So a tweet says, Dion ain't the only coach who thinks this way. Sadly, it hurts more when coming from a black man. Another disappointing step in his journey. So, Pierre, I want to start with you. What's your reaction to this, and are you disappointed to hear this from Dion Sanders? Ooh -wee. <laughs> Put this tea down. Um, look, first of all, we know Dion's personality. Okay, let's not act like let's not act like we be shocked by this. You know what I'm saying? We know he's glorious, funny. He talks all kind of madness. Um, it was his opinion. Um, we we can make it black and white, but not those. None of those positions are all black or all white. You know, those are this is white linemen on defense. Some people are not. There's black quarterbacks, white quarterbacks. So, but. In, in totality, I get what he was saying in a fun way. You know, quarterbacks have to be the leader of the team. So, they, you know, if they're making mistakes off, outside of the, the, uh, the field, they're, they're looked upon how you be a leader when you're messing up. But linemen, offensive linemen, are there to – they have a lot of rules. They have to block only, have to keep your hands at a certain place. So you have to be a little more, you know, structured. But defensive linemen, they in it to get it, okay? This is all what it is. They, they come and they bull rushing. They throwing anything they can. They have more with their hands they can do. Their, um, their job is to kill and destroy, you know, get through the offensive linemen, get to that quarterback, that running back, and tear his ass up, and that's their mentality. So he's joking about that type of mentality. Just come and get it. Get what you got to go get. But if you want to turn to black and white, it means you're acting like only white, black, or alignment, or off defense alignment, which is not true. It can be any color. So I get his jokes and his gist. Capone, let me come to you. Same question. What's your reaction to it? And are you disappointed to hear this from Dion? I don't think it was a joke. I think he was kind of serious about that. That ain't something that you could just make up off the fly if you're not a comedian. Um, I think that it was uh, distasteful, uh, especially in, in the realm that he was saying it in. And I, what I didn't understand is, is if a uh, lineman has two parents, does that make him not good? I mean, what was the purpose of, of saying that anyway? I can understand a quarterback being focused and trying to just keep him because he carries the team, but to use the parents and the backgrounds and all of that, I, I think that that was really stupid. Danielle, let me bring you in. I'd love to get your thoughts. What's your reaction to this, and are you disappointed? Let me come with the facts before anything. Deion Sanders has a son that's a quarterback. His son was born in 2002. Dion Sanders and that son's mother got divorced in 2013, mm. which means the young man was all about 10 when they got a divorce. So doesn't mm. that make him coming from a single parent home? Because Dion hasn't been married since, and I don't think his mom has been married since. So those are two single parent households, despite the fact that they were married before, but your son is a quarterback. 
how did that happen? Um, is it because the person who recruited him was judging him from the fact that he came from Dion Sanders? And I think that's the whole just here. Dion Sanders is judging people by their background and not who they are as a person, which we all do. But it's a problem because I know some people who come from two parent households who can't even lead me into trouble. And trouble is the easiest thing to get into. So I think it's wrong for him to judge the fact that because you come from a two parent household that you have leadership capabilities because your son is doing quite fine Dion and you're divorcee. I mean, come with the facts. She broke down the years and everything. Um, let me let me ask you this now. Do you think households define us? Because I, I think you you may mention there some. Do you think that defines who we are as a people, especially the black community? I think what defines us is who you grow up around. You can grow. Let me use myself as an example. I come from a single parent household. My mother raised me not on her own. She had a village to help her. I have godparents. I have godfathers that taught me exactly how someone should be treated. And I also grew up in a good Bible-based church. Church. So it, it doesn't necessarily depend so much on the household, but the community that you grew up around. Because I can tell you now, I wasn't like in the 12th grade, I became very uninterested in school. So that 3.5 GPA that Dion would be talking about, I wouldn't fit in that category. But fast forward to today, I think I'm a very intelligent person because y'all have me on here giving my thoughts and reviews and opinions on something. But it was all because of the community I came from and the fact that you always circle back and hound down on those values that were instilled in you from right. you were younger. And um, I could tell you this, if I was to ever get in trouble, I don't know if like this is a thing overseas, but like the whole village would like bark my ass. Like that's that's kind of possession. The whole village. You told it from the whole village. And that's what kept um, me in line. So it's all about community. Pierre, let me ask you that same question. What do you think? Do you think the household defines who you are, especially within the black community? All right, that's a loaded question. Uh, no, nothing defines you. You know, she said she went to church and she's from church raised. I know people in church that ain't shit. You know, came out she was raised in a church and came out to be criminals and assholes. So church don't mean nothing. But in her situation, it meant something. That's fine. But why do we strive so much for mother and father to be in the family? Father, stop leaving the mother. If, we, if it doesn't matter, if it doesn't really, you're still going to raise a good child. If the father leaves the home, then why do we fight so much for father? Stay home for your child. For what reason? If you leave, they, they, they're still going to be fine. No, it's we know what the structure is. A father and mother and father in a household normally helps someone, a, a kid be raised better. Normally. I don't say every situation. Put in the comment, my mom didn't raise myself up. Whatever. That's why we fight for that. Because a father and a mother in a household, normally, that work, that's a, a unity that works, they love each other, normally can raise a child in a different way. Doesn't always work, but we strive for that. Why do we strive for that? Because statistically, it shows parents of two, kids from two parent, parent home get raised up a little different, you know, maybe financially different, go to schools better, or whatever the case may be. So that's what I think he was applying. So yeah, sure. If you want to sit here and say every situation works out that way when you have a two parent home. No, no one's saying that, but we know like wearing a seatbelt. We know you all ain't going to live every time you wear a seatbelt in a car accident, but guess what? More times than none, you will. Capone, same question to you. What do you think? Do you think the household defines, you know, who a person is? First of all, I'm tired of hearing Pierre use that seatbelt analogy for every little subject that we get into when we disagree. You know, if you wear a seatbelt, niggas die with seatbelts too. Um, anyway, <laughs> said it <laughs> anyway um, no, I was raised by a young mother and a grandmother. And uh, I think I turned out pretty well. Never had a father. Um, I'm very close or try to be close as possible with my kids, but sometimes that don't even work out. Uh, I think you define you. The decisions that you make in life, once you learn decisions, that's who you become. Um, for Dion to be a coach and, and give these requirements, like I said, to me, it doesn't make sense. Absolutely. Now, okay. You did come out fine, but you did go to jail. Now, if yeah. I don't know, with your mother and grandmother, you still went to jail. You didn't right, to but the, that the, was that was a decision but, that I made. I understand it. I understand right. it. But, but before you say that, you know, maybe if your father was around in the household, you might not have been to going to jail. We don't know. You don't right. know that. 
I don't, but I know I went because of the actions that I took in the streets. And uh, I'm okay right. with that because uh, I probably would have wound up dead the way I was going. So yeah, I turned out pretty good. Okay. <laughs> We're definitely happy to have you. Now, of course, as I mentioned, a lot of people on social media are actually on both sides of the fence when it comes to this. Um, I want to read a couple of those tweets and come back and get your thoughts on that. So we have one user who said, man, had a bunch of white men laughing at single black mothers and their struggles. On the other end, we had someone else tweet that said, I learned today that only black men play defensive linemen for Deion Sanders, being sarcastic. Surely his recruitment comments were about black mothers and their struggles, right? Inserts unnecessary outrage here. Google, show me Jackson State University football DL playing for Deion Sanders. And in the pictures, he pictures pretty much, you know, white defensive linemen in those pictures saying that, hey, it's, it's not just about, you know, the black thing. But Pierre, let me come to you and ask, do you think people are upset at the conversation? Or do you think people are upset at the fact that he had that conversation on a platform of people that didn't look like us. I can't speak for others. I just think it's, it's the implication. You know, they think that he was talking about black mamas only, you know, and black, you know, whatever negative he put, they thought that insert black person, not the fact that it can be white and black, you know, you know, he has white and black people players, but they, you just insert black when it's negative from out of his mouth. So if you feel that way, that's all he was talking about was black people and black mamas only black, black, black. Because he has white linemen, too. They got mamas, too. You know, so he wasn't talking about them, I guess. So it all depends on what your rage, your inner rage is and how you feel, how you walk around on a daily. Do you Are you upset daily? Are you always, always about racism for everywhere you look at it? If it is, then there it is. And that's what anything you want to say, you can twist it into a racial situation. So that's what I think they're pissed off because he's on a white show, ra racist. Man. I guess he'd be, if he's on BET, they'd be like, oh, it's all right. He's on BET. Well, I don't know. People... People do what they do, you know, so I don't I can't think for other people. Danielle, let me come to you. A user says, LOL, this is y'all issue. Dion said nothing about race and you assume he's talking about black women like only black women are single mothers. The unconscious stereotyping is crazy. Same question to you, Danielle. What are your thoughts? Do you think people are upset at the actual conversation or people are upset at the platform that he chose to have that type of conversation? I think is both. I think it's everything in its entirety. I think also too, what we have to remember is, yes, he could be talking about other races as well. But when you look at Deion Sanders, you look at him as the coach that came from an HBCU, which means to us that you're predominantly from a predominantly black college. And you be also have in mind Deion Sanders, the inspirational speaker that's that, that, that deposits so much into us. So what I've seen online, so automatically when you sit down and you say these things and you don't clarify this fact, people are automatically going to assume he's talking about black people, especially in the climate that we're in. And then you have a bunch of white men key keying in the background at your comments. So it's a very, it's a very sensitive case. And I think in this, in this, Dion should have made it very clear that he was not just speaking about black mothers, but the brand that you've built automatically we think, okay, you're talking about black people. Capone, let me come to you. Do you think, so you know, we, we've had discussions of, of Deion Sanders before, right? You know, when he left Jackson State and went to Colorado, that was a big thing. Do you think this is just adding fuel to that fire that was created when he chose to leave Jackson State and go to Colorado, Capone? I think the one thing that we're missing here is who we're talking about. Deion Sanders, Showtime. The guy has to be controversial at everything that he does and uh he loves attention and so the the conversation shouldn't have even been had whether it was on a platform or not or the platform that it was on basically we're talking about football you want good healthy players that's it don't care what their parents did or what their father did if your father was an alcoholic or mother was a hoe it doesn't matter it matters that you get guys who are hungry to play the game, respect the coach, and then move it forward. All of the other extra stuff was totally unnecessary. But look what we're talking about, Mr. Prime. Showtime. He has to put on the show. Pierre, let me come to you. Same thing, and I want to add a layer. Do you think this adds fuel to the fire? And also, do you think people are being unfair to, like, this expectation for Deion Sanders? unfair i don't know the word unfair is correct uh 
he put it out there, you know, and, you know, when you put it out there, it is what it is. It's no different than what I put out on here. You know, I expect, you know, the comments on it. I hate the people who comment on me. If you don't like me in the comments, I don't like you either. So just let you know that, you know, especially if you ain't got your real name, if you Apple's 800, you really ain't shit to me, to be honest with you, because you ain't even bold to have your name on the comments. So I get it. So those who don't like me in the comments, for why I speak my mind, I don't like you either. Trust me. I don't like you. If I met you, I would hate your guts. So what are we talking about? You know, he does what he does. And we're here for it. Here's the thing, just like here. What you're going to do about it, but complain and nothing. So next week, when he, or next year, when he plays starts football and he, his team does very well, yeah, brother, that brother came from nothing, took a sorry Colorado team and did look what he did. That's a black foul. That's what we're talking about. Now you're on his, on his nutsack. You know, it doesn't matter what we, what we be working on. We ain't doing nothing about it. <laughs> ain't nothing we're going to do about it. But talk trash online. That's all you're going to do about it. And I'm talking about you viewers ain't going to do nothing about it who don't like what he said. What you going to do? You going to write a letter? You going to write a letter to him? I don't think so. You going to say something when you see him in his face? I don't think so. You're just going to complain. And that's it. And that's why he knows. And that's why he's on here for. That's why he does what he does. That's what it is. And then just one more thing, Pierre. Do you think it's, it adds fuel to the fire that was created when he did leave Jackson State to go to Colorado? Sure. I mean, it, it just added on to what, how people felt about him. You know, some people who say, you know, was, was on his on his side are still on his side. Those who didn't, they want to jump in the comments. They want that's the one who's saying the thing they don't like about him. Um, to me, you know, at the end of the day, uh, had he said something like, you know, the black, the my black defensive play, my the big black people play defensive line for me, ain't blah blah blah. People would have said, ain't only blacks. There's white people who do it too. White people play defensive line too. <laughs> But they would play the reverse then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now it's like, he didn't say that. Now they're like, you just talking about black people. Oh, man, what do we want this week? This week we want this, we want that. We don't know what we want. So, but we want more of me on this, you know, on Comedy <laughs> Hype News. We know that much. <laughs> Danielle closes out. Same question for you. Do you think that this situation adds fuel to the fire that was created when Deion Sanders left Jackson State to go to Colorado? Colorado, excuse me. Let me first say, if you watch them when they are kiki in, in the background and you see Dion's body language, he was very comfortable in saying what he said. So to me, it's sort of an indication that y'all is talk with this in the smokers room. This is something that y'all do. This is something that co it seems like not only he thinks this way, but other coaches think, think this way. And um, it's, it's pretty sad in the world of sportsmanship that the fact that you're already prejudging me from an application on if I have a single parent household or a two parent household. So you're already eliminated my opportunity, my opportunities and my chances of doing better because of that. So I, I just wanted to throw that in there. And I think it is adding fuel to the fire because I remember when the comments were flying around, people were like, Deion Sanders really don't care about the community. He's leaving Jackson State and going to Colorado for more money. He's selfish, just that next thing. So it adds to that conversation because even when he spoke, he said, man, I want my linemen. They got to be on the lunch program. They got to be hungry. They got to want to feed their mama. At no point in there did he say, I want them to do better. I want them to make more money. I want them to make something out of their life. He did not say that. So that means you're using somebody's pain and afflictions to enhance your team and your career. So it's all about you. So I think it does add fuel to the fire. But but let me tell you, I think this, I think some of it was in jest because if he if, if he waits, he's a great lineman, a, a dope lineman who has a mother and father in their family, and he and this guy is kicking behind in, in high school, I don't think he's gonna say, nah, you got two parents, I can't put you on the team. I don't believe he's like that. Or quarterback who's dope as heck, health athletic, smart. You know, off field, he's smart, crazy smart, and he only has uh, a mother. I don't think Dion's gonna say, "Man, I need two pair home if I get you." I think we're taking it way too, you know, too much over the board with saying that's what he wants only. I think he's making it in jest. <laughs> well, that that he... proves that proves that he shouldn't have made the comment. He didn't have to make the comment if what you're saying is true. Mm -hmm. He did not have to make the I comment, but he made but... the comment, and that's why we're expressing what we're expressing because sure. he said exactly what. He said. Right. But uh, like I said, there's always meaning behind. But again, it's fine. You know. Well, in true Dion fashion, I'm sure we will hear from him soon. I'm pretty sure he's going to let this build up a little more and then speak on it. So I'm sure we'll hear straight from him. Now, before we head out, of course, I want to know about you guys and what you have going on. So Capone, 
Mr. Cat back. I'm starting with you. What do you have coming up? And of course, how can people follow you? Controversy on Cat back tonight at eight o'clock. Tune in. Uh, I don't. I don't really deal with celebrities. I'm unfortunate. Like Pierre got all the celebrities. <laughs> I deal with just regular people that spill and talk about what they got going on. So cap back tonight at eight o'clock on Instagram. And this week I will be in Chicago. I'm actually in New York, New Jersey area now, and it's snowing crazy out here. So, uh, you know, I'll be working all day today. <laughs> Man, well, and how can people follow you? Oh, follow me on this amazing platform, uh, Instagram, where if you cannot spell Capone, please don't follow me. It's Comedian Capone, or you can catch me here on the great Comedy Hype News. Every Monday and Tuesday right here with me, Danielle calling in from the Bahamas. What do you have going on? What can we expect to see on the Instagram story? And of course, how can people follow you? On the Instagram story, you can follow me at D-E-E A Miller. And in my stories, I take pride in showing everybody about this beautiful country that we have with naturally born comedians here. <laughs> um, <laughs> and also, you can go and check out my YouTube channel. It's Danielle, D-E-N-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Make sure you subscribe there. And of course, Comedy Hype every Tuesday. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and also leave your comment and click the like button and share with your family and friends. There you go. And last and certainly not least, Mr. Pierre, what do you have going on? And of course, how can people follow you? First of all, you can follow me at Comic Pierre. Uh, Pierre spelled P-I-E-R-R-E -E for some of y'all. Um, <laughs> you can follow me here in the comments. And if you start off with Pierre, I'll read it. If not, I'll scroll by so fast. But I don't even stop unless I see my name. So my name, if you want to talk about me, don't do like the fourth letter, fourth word. Start off with Pierre ain't shit, and I'll stop, okay? <laughs> so that's that. But I'm here for it. That's what I love it. Um, my podcast is kicking butt. Again, thank y'all. We hit over 100,000 subscribers. Um, this week, we got my boy Carlos Miller from Wildin' Out. You know, dope, dope Carlos Miller. I mean, people are loving Carlos uh, right now. The first uh, clip dropped it, uh, yesterday. We dropped one today. Um, and um, I'll be in Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'll be in Yonkers, New York. So, I mean... You know, you know, they, they hiring a brother, and my brother working and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So remember, you can follow me on my panic room if you want to. This is how we go. This is how we do it here. Okay, this is how we do it. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is how we do it. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. And you know what? I tell you what. On some real stuff, I even love the folks that don't like me on here, man. Because you keep me here. I'm here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Put it in the comments. Put it in the damn comments. And as always, I appreciate all of you for chiming in on this topic. But you heard from us. Now we want to hear from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts of Deion Sanders receiving backlash for his controversial comments on his recruitment strategies? For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. Put it in those comments. There you go. Big fan of the Comedy Hype News Show? Well, now you can join us live in studio for lunch at Comedy Hype. Click the link down below in our description or go to our Instagram page and click the link in our bio for your chance to RSVP. I hope to see you here for Comedy Hype News. I'm Symphony Thompson.